Morning YouTube viewers and subscribers. I've got a couple of uh, I was going through some of the carbs I've got and I was going through and cleaning them up. So I've got a couple of them disassembled here and I wanted to go through a quick video <clears throat> that shows how you can set up a two-stroke carb. Actually this probably applies to four-stroke carbs as well. How you can set up a carb initially. Say you bought a used engine, you're having trouble getting it to run. It won't idle, it won't transition, you don't know what the heck to do, you don't know how to reset the carb to the factory defaults. Well I'm going to show you what I've done for many years and I don't necessarily need to know what the manufacturer says is the factory default because you can find it yourself if you, and I'm going to have a Caddyshack reference here, be the fuel instead of be the ball, be the fuel. Those of you that understand will get it. So you have to just envision yourself as being the fuel flow going through the carb and that'll help you set it up. So what I'm going to do here is real quickly I'm going to reassemble these carbs um, and then I'll go through how you set it up. But I wanted to actually take out the idle needle. So this is the idle needle, the low speed adjustment needle for this OS7B carb. And this carb here is from a Mutinic 61 Millennium Pro engine and I also have the idle needle out of it. Now some things you need to be uh, mindful of if you go to disassemble a carb. Uh, it, it's important to try to find the the exploded parts breakdown or the instructions for the carb because you can get kind of frustrated pretty easily. Now this OS carb, this idle needle, let me zoom in here just a hair, this idle needle it's got the slot here so that's where you would actually make the adjustment but this particular barrel setup when you go to reinstall this this goes in like this so you actually have to put it down in here like that and then kind of push pressure on it while you're trying to screw it in place this one on the other hand does not go like that this one screws in and out this way so it does not go in from the inside so like I said, I'm going to put these two carbs together here real quick and then I'll show you the method I use to go about setting them up. Okay, so I've got this OS carb reassembled. I've got the high speed needle out. I'm going to go ahead and install it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the throttle barrel all the way up. I'm going to close this fully and I'm going to attach a piece of fuel tubing to it. <clears throat> so with the throttle all the way open and the high speed needle valve closed completely you should hear no airflow coming through this at all. Nothing. So now what I typically do is I'll open it two full turns. One, two, now listen. I haven't moved the throttle position. Okay, so you can hear I've got a lot of fuel or air. We're simulating fuel going through there. Now listen as I blow in here and close the throttle. You hear that reduction of airflow? That's obviously showing you that it does work it's to some degree, but let me, and what I do here is this has a throttle stop screw. Many carbs don't, which is a little bit more difficult. But what I do here is I set my throttle stop screw to about a millimeter, maybe a sixteenth of an inch from being fully closed. And that's how I'll set the idle adjustment initially anyway. So I've got it closed. Listen. A lot of airflow going through there right now. Now I've got this idle screw flush. Obviously that's going to allow way too much fuel in so you'll have too much too high of a fuel mixture uh, still at low speed so I'm going to start closing this and try and do this all on camera okay so I've got it closed completely now I mean it's not completely screwed in but I have no airflow I can't hear any airflow at all now watch I'm going to open the throttle So the air is getting completely shut off at low speed. So now what I want to do is I want to start, I'll be blowing in here with the throttle closed with my opening and I'm just going to start opening this 
idle adjustment screw is still until I just start to hear air coming through. Okay, I can just barely hear air going through there now. Maybe a little bit more. I'm not sure how well the mic on this camera is going to pick this up. But basically you want to be able to, at full throttle, you want to hear a lot of airflow, And then at idle, with the throttle stop screw set, you want to hear a considerably reduced airflow, Maybe one-fifth of what you are hearing at full throttle. Not completely closed, but also not about halfway because your idle mi mixture will be way too rich then. So I think I've got this one set pretty good. So I'm not sure, like I said, if you're going to be able to hear that or not, but that's, in theory, what you do. Now I could just go and put this on an engine and run it, and I'm probably going to be pretty close in the ballpark. Now, this Mutinic carb is pretty much the same, except unfortunately this one doesn't have a throttle stop screw, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult. Now I've got this, this thing was way in, the idle mixture was screwed way in when I took it off the engine. Full throttle. Let me go back to close it completely. Now see, this throttle needle, high-speed needle valve is closed completely, but I can still hear a little bit of air coming through here, and I think it's just because this is a really inferior carb anyway. A lot of airflow. Now this is completely closed, the throttle stop screw is not present here, so this is completely closed. I've got the throttle barrel set about where I would set it for a low speed idle. And there's a lot of airflow going through there. So let me close this up. Well, okay, so this carb is now set up approximate two. So this will give me a good starting place for running that engine. So this is the technique I use. If you ever get to a point where you're completely lost on where your carb is set or it just doesn't seem right, go ahead, disassemble it, or at least unscrew all the screws completely and follow those steps and I think you'll get in a pretty good ballpark area for being able to get that carb reset. Like I said, I've used this technique for years. This is what I use on brand new engines, especially the newer engines that I have them from China because uh, the quality isn't so good and those people just don't have a clue how to set up a carb. They just screw parts in and say it's good to go. I've got many ASP engines and some other uh, lesser named engines new in the box that screws weren't tight carbs weren't set up properly so knowing this technique will at least hopefully eliminate some uh, issues you might have with trying to get a car, uh, engine running for the first time or even if you buy a used engine I buy a lot of used engines so I have to do this on every single one I have and uh, that's basically how I get pretty damn good at setting these carbs up initially and have very little tuning to do on the bench so I hope you learned something about setting up carbs